A desperate man seeks for help. Chapter 2. Before Maya could move an inch, Jerry leaped up, ran up the stairs, and opened the front door. Standing on the steps was a man with a bushy black mustache wearing striped wool hat and wet clothes. It was Mohammed Karat, or Carrot, the richest man in all of Pleasant Valley. Mohammed Karat owned the jeweler's store on Church Street. His store was famous all across the country, from New York to L.A., for its spectacular diamond rings, earrings, and other fancy jewelry. What could the jeweler possibly want with Jerry and Maya? Jerry showed Mr. Carrot down to their small office in the basement. Welcome, Mr. Carrot. Please sit down, said Maya, gesturing toward, the, toward an empty chair. Mohammed Garrett plunked down in the armchair and removed a handkerchief from his coat pocket. He was sweating, and Jerry and Maya could see that he was nervous. What can we do for you, Mr. Garrett? asked asked Jerry politely. I'm desperate to, for help, began Mr. Garrett. I saw your poster on the street light outside my store. Are you still accepting cases? Maya nodded and eagerly took out their pe their pens and notebooks. As you probably know, I've owned the jewelry store on Church Street for many years, and my business has been booming, started Mohammed Karat. People come to my quiet little store on Pleasant Valley from far and wide, but now it seems my luck has run out, he said, as he blew his nose into his handkerchief. What do you mean, asked Jerry. My trust has been violated, that's what I mean, exclaimed Mohammed Karat. One of the people working at my store is stealing my diamonds, and I'm sure of it. In the past month, five extremely valuable gems have disappeared, and I have no idea how. I am a very curious man. I require everyone who works in the store to empty their bags and pockets before they go home. But I never find anything. Nothing has been carried out of the store, and I'm absolutely certain of that. What do the police think, Maya? asked Maya. The police have been investigating and keeping watch since the very first diamond disappeared, but they don't have a suspect. They said they can't do anything until the thieves make a mistake and give himself or herself away. Mohammed loosened the tie around his neck. <clears throat> Soon I'll be ruined and we'll have to close my store, <laughs> he sniffed. Without my famous diamonds, my customers will quickly lose interest in my jewelry store altogether. Jerry and Maya could see that Mr. Carrot was really upset. Well, this is a tricky situation, said Jerry, scratching his nose with his pen. That helped them think. The police can't do any more to help, and they don't have a suspect. Is that right? Absolutely re right, replied Mohammed Carrot. But I have an idea. I'll hire the two of you to work in my store. While you're working, you can secretly keep an eye on the employees and tip me off any to any suspicious behavior. You can help me find out who's been stealing my diamonds. Are you interested? Please say you are. Maya and Jerry exchanged a quick glance. We'll start tomorrow. Chapter 3, The Investigation Begins. The next day, the sun was shining brightly. Oh, wait, I should pause right here. So now we know exactly what the mystery is, and we know what's going on. So Mr. Carrot owns a jewelry store, and he is missing famous or very expensive um, gems or diamonds. And um, he wants Jerry and Maya to help out. Chapter 3, The Investigation Begins. The next day, the sun was shining brightly, and Maya and Jerry had packed a bag containing their detective kits and took the bus to Church Street. They got off in front of the hotel just down the road from Mohammed Carrot's famous jewelry store between the cafe and the post office. Um, there is a map posted in your Google Classroom if you wanted to see it. Jerry and Maya walked to the old church so that they could get a good look, get a look from the store across the street. The store was at street level, and Mr. Carrot owned the two floors above it. So there's a diamond thief in there somewhere, said Jerry. Are you scared? Oh, come on. Let's get started, scoffed Maya, dragging Jerry toward the store. They crossed the street and opened the front door, and a bell chimed as they went in. Maya looked around carefully. An elderly assistant asked if she could help them. When Maya asked to speak to the owner, the assistant led the two detectives to an office in the back of the store. The assistant knocked on the door to the office. Come in, they heard Mohammed Carrot call. Maya opened the door and Mohammed Carrot stood up from behind his desk. He walked toward them with his arms outstretched. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, he cried. 
Then he lowered his voice and whispered, Another diamond disappeared yesterday. That's the sixth. I can't understand how they do it. I need your help more than ever. Jerry noticed the elderly woman lingering in the little doorway. She seemed to be listening curiously. Ooh, this elderly lady seems like a suspect already. You may go back to the front, Vivian, Muhammad Carrot, shutting the door behind her. Let's get started, said Jerry, as they settled down on a big brown sofa. Could you tell us about the people who work here and what typical day looks in the store looks like? Mohammed Carrot took out his handkerchief and blew his nose loudly. He walked to his desk, opened the front of the drawers, and took out two photos. The store opens at 10 and closes at 6 p.m. 10 a.m. and closes at 6 p.m. At some point during that time, the diamond disappears. The whole thing is impossible to explain. I'm going mad, he yelled. Um, Mr. Carrot, please try to calm down, said uh, Maya. Excuse me, Mr. Carrot said as he collected himself. Other than myself, there are three people who work here. Muhammad passed one of the photos to Jerry and Maya. Vivian Leander, store assistant. You already met her. She's the one who, she's the one who showed you to my office. Vivian works in the front of the store and helps customers. She's been with the business for many years and has always done an excellent job. But she ran into some trouble last year. Her house burned down, and I believe the insurance company is refusing to pay her any money, explained Mr. Explained Muhammad Carrot. Apparently, Vivian is behind on some insurance payments, so now she's sort of out on cash. Just last week, she came to my office and asked for a raise. I'd be happy to help her, but as I am sure you can understand, there's no way I can afford a raise right now. Jerry scratched his nose with his pen and took a note made a known as notebook. Suspect's motive, Vivian Leander needs money. Mohammed Carrot passed them another photo. Danny Braveheart. There's Danny Braveheart. He works in the second floor just above the store. He continued, he cleans and polishes the jewelry before it's sold. To be honest, Danny's a bit grumpy for my taste, but he's always on time and he keeps things in order and he's a trustworthy employee. Danny's dad actually owned this store many years and years ago. Muhammad Carrot went on, but his finan had financial problems and had to sell it. That's when I bought the store. Otherwise, Danny would be the boss here today. Jerry didn't have to scratch his nose this time. He just simply wrote, Danny Braveheart wants to take over the store. So immediately here, Jerry is, is considering him to be like a number one suspect because he maybe wants to get the store back. Muhammad Carrot passed Jerry and Maya the final and third photo. Luke Smith. He works on top. He works on the top floor of the building. He cuts the diamonds, sets them into, into elegant rings and necklaces. Luke hasn't worked here very long, but he is careful and he's very good at his job. He worked in the jewelry business for many years, and with his previous employees, they were always pleased with very pleased with him. Luke likes nice clothes and fast sports cars. He bought a new car just last week, actually. Muhammad Carrot laughed. <laughs> you should have seen Danny Braveheart's face when Luke showed off his new car. Danny looked at that car with disgust and then at Luke with loathing. Oh, I wonder what that word means, loathing. It must mean disgust. <laughs> 380 horsepower, Luke bragged to him and patted him on the hood. To which Danny had replied, You only need one horsepower if you choose the right one. And he stormed off. None of us, Vivian, Luke, nor I, understood what he meant. He continued to Ma he con continued to Muhammad Carrot. Danny was definitely in one of those grumpy moods. But like I said, Luke Smith is a nice guy. He's into fitness. He's always going for a jog and carrying around an apple to snack on. Jerry wrote in his notebook, Luke Smith has plenty of money. Where did it come from? All right, then. I think that's all you need to know, Muhammad Carrot. As he, said Muhammad Carrot as he sprang up from the sofa. Now I'll introduce you to the staff. Here's a, I think this is, um, what's his name? Uh, Luke Smith. This is, must be him right here. Got a car there, Jaguar looks like. And that's the end of the chapter right there. So um, I guess in the next page we're going to, next chapter we're going to be introduced to all of the, um, the suspects, if you will. Okay.